It's such a delight to be here again. Happy New Year to everyone. I want to say indeed, this is the year of signs and wonders. This is a beautiful year ahead of us. In Jesus' name, every dream, every desire will come to pass in Jesus' name. Let's just say a prayer, word of prayer once again. Father, we just want to say thank you. We just give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for this conference, for this meeting. Thank you for the positioning of this meeting, you know, starting at the end, at the beginning of the year, talking about fit for purpose. We just give you praise. We thank you for all you have done. Thank you for every session since we started. Receive all glory, receive all thanks in Jesus' name. As we go into today's session, Lord, we just decree that your word we have is full course in the name of Jesus. The word of God will be glorified in our midst. Our lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. I receive utterance. I speak boldly as the Holy Spirit will inspire in the mighty name of Jesus. Our hearts are ready to receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, please, can you just join me to pray in the Holy Ghost? Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for like uh, maybe two, three minutes. Let's just edify ourselves, preparing our hearts for the to receive this morning. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, he that prays in tongues edifies himself, herself. Father, Lord, we just give you praise as we just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few more minutes. We just thank you because we edify ourselves. We prepare our hearts for the, our eyes, our thoughts are focused into what you have to say. Mani hado kosta hika deke de de hika dia badosta da de handa redosta deke da ba ba ba. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you because you are here, and we thank you for what you're set to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we have edified ourselves. Amen. Please, can you join me to open your? Can we open our Bibles to first um, to the Book of Colossians? Let's just take one or two prayer points, even as we start Colossians. Um, chapter one, we're just going to take verses nine, maybe verses nine and 10, hallelujah. Colossians one, verses nine and 10. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for ourselves, to pray for you, pray for ourselves, and to ask that we might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. When we're talking about purpose, when we're talking about fulfilling God's plans, God's will for our lives, this is one of the scriptures that is so profound for us. In fact, there are some scriptures I will encourage us to pray every day. I recall when I was st still back at the Bible school, one of my um, lecturers said something. He said, hey, just keep praying Colossians 4.12b. I stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Not one, all the will of God. I'm adding this Colossians 1 9 as one scripture we need to pray every day that we are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That means every time we want to take a step, we are walking in line with God's will. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost, putting that scripture in our hearts. We are filled as we go through the year 2024, even beyond now, we are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In every area of our lives, in ministry, in career, regarding the plans and purposes, the assignment. Do things. We don't just pick up assignments. We don't copy and paste. No, we are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Our life, and verses 10 goes on to say that we walk worthy, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. This will be our portion this year. In Jesus' name, I pray for myself, pray for everyone on this call, even those who would watch the replay, in the name of Jesus, we fully please the Lord. We walk worthy of the Lord. 
we are fruitful in every good work. We increase in the knowledge of God this year, 2024, even beyond in the name of Jesus. So we are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We walk worthy of the Lord in everything we do and in every way. We fully please the Lord. We are fruitful in every good work. We increase in the knowledge of God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. One more scripture. Hallelujah. Please, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. We're just going to pray 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 and 12. 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 and 12. I'm using the NKJV still. Um, therefore, we, we, therefore, we also... Okay, maybe I should hold on for everyone to kindly open it so we can pray together. Therefore, we also pray. All right. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith will pa with power. That the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because as we go through this year, in the name of Jesus, in all we do, in all our interactions, in all our pursuit, in the desire to fulfill your plans and purposes for our lives, we decree, we declare that you will count us worthy of your calling. We will fulfill all the good pleasure of your goodness and the work of faith with power. In the name of Jesus, we decree, we declare, I love this part, that Jesus will be glorified in us. And that is the essence of purpose. When we talk about purpose, when we talk about fulfilling purpose, this is what we're supposed to, this should be our motive, our desire, that Jesus will be glorified in us and we in him. So it's a two-way thing. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, the name, that the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified in us this year and beyond in the name of Jesus and we in him. In the name of Jesus, Jesus will be glorified in us and we in him in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just give you thanks because this is the confidence we have in you that as we have prayed these prayers, as we have declared and made these positive declarations about our lives, so is it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. I want you to declare in the chat room, I am fit for purpose. I am fit for purpose. Just make that declaration. Just drop it in the chat room. Because that would be our, our testimony all through this year. By the end of the year, when we are taking stock, we're going to say, yes, I am fit, fit for purpose. I am fit for purpose. I, you know, I was, I was I, I, probably by the end of um, today, I will share two scriptures of, of two people. Oh, meanwhile, I would like to first say a big thank you to my dear sister, Pastor Missy. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Pastor Lumide, and thank you to the entire team, the management, everyone working together in this vine year to ensure this great work is ongoing. I say thank you, and thank you for having me again. And thank you, everyone, for being here, and thank you for having me. That's how the Fit for Purpose, you know, um, um, agenda is just burning inside of me that I just dumped into it straight. It's so amazing. You know, to look at purpose, look at the plans and, and mandates of God for our life, for, for our lives from different perspectives. What is purpose? We're talking about fit for purpose. So today we're just going to lay some foundations um, and we're going to look at few people in the Bible who actually fulfilled, you know, purpose. We're going to probably by the end of today, I will make mention of some wrong conceptions about purpose. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, I think we'll be talking about maybe seven things that can cause us to be unfit for purpose. And I'll wrap up by the grace of God with the time in the time frame I have. I'll wrap up by talking about um, 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 how to discern God's purpose because that's one major part that I also struggled with. Hey, you know when you, when you go back and fast twenty times, you fast today, you fast next month, you're asking God the same thing: What is my purpose? What am I called to do? What should I do? Are you having different ideas running through your mind? Do I have anybody who has witnessed what I've witnessed? Yes, there's a way to discern God's purpose for our lives. And by the grace of God, we'll look into that tomorrow as well. But let's start today. What is purpose? I know we have different definitions. I also know that a lot have been said already, but I'm just going to explain and define purpose by one scripture. John 4.34. I'll start with the NLT translation. John 4.34. Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. 
John 4, 34, Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and finishing his work. So simply define in my own, you know, from the scriptures and from what I've come to believe, purpose is anything that has to do with God's will is us working towards fulfilling that God's will and agenda, whatever it might be. Hallelujah. That's purpose. Fulfilling, bringing glory to God, you know, being a blessing to people, being a blessing to the kingdom of God, and you in turn becomes blessed because there is no one that gives that doesn't receive. Yes, being a blessing to people, fulfilling God's agenda, fulfilling God's will. Let's look at this scripture in maybe another translation. Let's see another translation here. Hallelujah. The NIV says, very, 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 very truly, I tell you. Okay, let me just do the amplified and we can move on from there. The ampli amplified version says, John 4 34, it says, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete, finish his work. I pray that in the name of Jesus we receive grace to finish every good thing God has committed to us in Jesus' name. Now, talking about purpose, okay, I want to do the message translation. I, I like this as well. Jesus said, the food that keeps me going, I love this message translation as well. Jesus said, the food that keeps me going is to do the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work he started. Woo Hallelujah, finishing, do, 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 so doing the will of God. Doing the will of God. Africa, how do I know the will of God? We're going to have a look at it now. Praise God. So I'm going to classify as inspired in my heart this morning, you know, as I was preparing. I'm going to classify purposes, plans of God, assignment into two major classifications. Hallelujah. Two major classifications. Number one. So we've defined what purpose is doing the will of God, obeying God. You know, you know, delayed obedience is as good as disobedience. Being willing and obedient comes together. So doing the will of God and finishing, you know, praise God. We will start and finish well in Jesus' name. So two classification of purposes. No, but the first one is we have general purposes, general plans, general purposes as revealed from the scriptures for us. And the second one is the specific or individual or personalized plan and purposes for us. Hallelujah. So let, let's just take a look at them one after the other. There's the general one. Ah, you know, a lot of times, I'm all, I also went through this. A lot of times we are like, I don't know what God has called me to do. So this would be a blessing to all of us. If you are still at that space where you are still considering, what am I called to do? What am I asked to do? What will God have me do? Don't start with these ones. Why you start with this one, the Lord will open up other things. It will lead you, because sometimes the general one can open up the specific and personalized one. Praise God. There are some certain things that have been committed to us from the scriptures. There are also plans and purposes of God. Hallelujah. Remember, purpose is anything that has to do with the will of God, instructions from God. And we're going to see more about that. Let's look at 2 second, second Corinthians 5. This popular scripture, but let's take a look at it carefully. 2 Corinthians 5, I'm going to read from 17. Hallelujah. 17 to maybe 19. 2 Corinthians 5 from 17, using the NKJV, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has, please take a note of this word, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Whoa, that sounds so interesting. Giving us the ministry of reconciliation. That is what God was in Christ. That is, that is what God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Christ came to reconcile us to him, not imputing the trespasses of them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So what is the first general mandate we have to run with? Number one, reconciliation, reconciling people to God. What does that, what am I trying to say? Bringing the word of the, the gospel, preaching the word, every opportunity. Once you find somebody who, for instance, yesterday, towards the end of yesterday, I just had this, um, 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 I was just inspired in my heart to call somebody. I just perceived that the person was probably having, was shaking, you know, in our, in our work with God. And I just picked up my phone and I called. That's what I'm talking about, reconciling. It might even not even be for just unbelievers, 
part of it is bringing the unsaved to become saved, all right? Remember, we have been giving this mandate to re reconcile people to God. So I picked up my phone and I called the person. And I just said, I just, this is, this just came to my heart. I just feel A, B, C, D. I feel, and it was just exactly as the Holy Spirit inspired and just ministered to me. Yes. So that's reconciling, being watchful, being sensitive to listen, to hear, call Tokme, call Buma, call Shola. It can be just one word, just one word, just one word, just one word do we speak that will reconcile someone who is struggling, who is trying to get back to God, maybe an unbeliever, trying to become a believer, maybe somebody who's already. Do you know that as believers, we need strength as well. We need one another, encouraging each other in psalms, in songs, teaching, admonition, and etc. So that's the first one. The second one can be found in Matthew 28. We all know these scriptures. I'm just trying to remind us of the general things, the general purpose and plan of, of God for us. If you go to Matthew 28, we have it there clearly stated from verses 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that are committed to you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, you know, way back, I used to feel, maybe this was for the 12, 12 disciples. This was for the apostles. But remember in John 17, 20, Jesus was praying for the disciples and he was praying for us. He said, I am also praying for those who will come to believe in me through this ones. So this covers us, you know, making disciples, bringing people into light. I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't know my purpose. This is one of the general mandates, general purpose that have been laid down for us. Let's have a look at them. There are lots of them. I'm just going to share maybe four of them. Mark 16. Mark 16. I'm going to start from... Let me start from 15, Mark 16, 15. What are the general instructions given to us? And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. So we have to go into the world, preach, and will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. So when we go out to preach, win souls, we are fulfilling God's purpose and plan and mandates. You know, when we cast out demons, we are fulfilling God's plan and purpose. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them. They will lay their hands on sick and they, the sick will recover. That's part of it. Can we see that? Those are general instructions given to us that we must live by and live through. Let's look at um, John, the last one under this first category, general instruction and purposes laid down by Jesus Christ and the scriptures for us. John 14, 12. What are those things I'm supposed to do if I even don't know anything to do? What am I supposed to do? John 14, 12, NIV. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've done and they will even do greater things than this because I go to be with the Father. Greater works is part of the mandate and the purpose of God for us, greater works. You know, sometimes we think of greater works, our hearts, we just do guess, guess, you know, but you know, one of my lecturers said something and it's so beautiful. You know, what Reverend Tosa actually said, he said greater works is, is being on social media and, pub, pub, and publicizing the gospel. That's so beautiful. When we share the word of God on our social media platforms, it's part of greater work because there was no social media back then. So right now, it's part of the greater works. On our statuses, we are published. Did anybody see? I don't want to, I'm not talking about any pastor, but I just want to bring out a point. Did anybody see the Joshua, TB Joshua movie? I don't know if anybody has seen it. I'm the only one that I've seen it on YouTube and everywhere. But you know what I'm trying to bring out? That's why greater works is needed by us. That's why we need to go into the world, go into the world and preach. That's why we need to be light. We are light in this dark age. We are a city set on a hill. That is why we need to keep pushing up. We just don't know. Did you listen? Did anybody listen to the people? What their quest for? What the hunger? What they were looking for? They were just looking for Jesus. Woo! You know, I was so, so, so pained listening to what led them into the bondage and everything. They were looking for Jesus. That is why we must, the first thing we should concentrate on, one of the major things we should do every day is to live by these general principles, these general requests by Jesus to do greater works, to make disciples, to lay hands on the sick. If you are just publicizing on your Facebook, on whatever platform, you are doing greater works already. Hallelujah. 
praise God. Father, we receive grace. Just receive grace. You know, it's easy to hear all these things, but we become doers of God's word this year in Jesus' name. I want to go further to talk about specific individuals. All right, now let's talk about specific um, or personalized purposes or plans or assignment that God can have for us. And we're going to look at um, some scriptures. All right, let's look at, have a look at some people. Let's have a look at some people. You know, what? I, now I trust God in the name of Jesus that as we go through this, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. In the name of Jesus, I trust God. Just the way I've been transformed by just, you know, sitting down under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit to look at all this. After this teaching in the name of Jesus and after this conference, we are, we are going to start looking down at those instructions that doesn't look like big assignment. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we are very good. Hallelujah. Let me let me say some things. Let me mention some before I go into. Let me let's, let me mention some things we need to take note about God's plan and purposes. Number one, it can be anything. It can be as small as an instruction to call someone. Now, when we talk about plan and purpose, it can be big. It can be. It might not be big. It can be an instruction. It can be a good gesture. It can be to be hospitable. Let's not forget that God's plan and purpose is not measured by the size. It's not measured by the size. It's measured by the, our obedience, our willingness to do. It's measured by our consistency. So it's not the size. You know, I don't know. You can, hear, you can hear things like this, that ah, that one has a great assignment. Though. That one has a big assignment. That means there's big assignment, there's small assignment. Not necessarily. It is in the obeying that causes us to say that, yes, we've done well. So I want to say that it can be anything, can be an instruction. I want to say the measurement of accomplishment. I have accomplished my purpose. Yes, you can have a sense of fulfillment. But let me also say that one of the things we must take note of about purpose is this. It is God that has the measuring stick. Let me say it that way. It is God. If you measure what God has told you to do by the size, you will miss out. If we measure it by what people say, you will think I'm not doing anything. You will think those people with big assignments are the ones doing great things. You know, another thing is plans and purposes can be a single task. It can be a request. It can be assignment. It can be anything. And I also want to say that plans, God's plans and purposes, they are not static. They are dynamic. You do want another one. Plans and purposes, when we talk about God's purpose, is a daily affair. It's not just in a specific, big, one-off assignments. I have finished my purpose in life, so I should go and sleep. No. The, the, the applaud God gives you for doing one is to give you more. You obey, he gives you more. You obey, he tells you tomorrow do another thing. So it's not on a one-off, once in a month, once in a year. No, I believe strongly that our purpose in Christ, the assignment and what God has called us to do is on a daily, God is daily unveiling. Do you know God has needs? He's daily unveiling and revealing things to us. Praise God. So let's start. Let's have a, we're going to have a good time. And I'll end by sharing some wrong conceptions that sometimes we've built up over time regarding purpose. Hallelujah. Remember we said purpose is the will of God that blesses people, brings glory to God, and also blesses us eventually. But we are not the first one. The first thing is to obey and glorify God, bring glory to God. So let's have a look at Jesus. We're going to be looking at, in fact, I have listed here a beautiful, beautiful story, but let's take as much as we can take. In the time I have. Let's have, have a look at Jesus. I'm starting with Jesus because he's the savior of the world and he came to fulfill a very, very special mandate. I'm going to read from Luke 4, 18 to 20, 18, maybe 18 and 19. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So Jesus was defining and explaining his purpose and mandate. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name, yes, we're going to get to this point. We're going to walk in this realm this year that you can categorically say that this is what God has called me to do. Hallelujah. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Recovery of sight to the blind, to set liberty, them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I think K. David will say to bring deliverance to the oppressed, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. But this is Jesus' CV. This is why Jesus came. Preach the gospel, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, 
recovery of sight to the blind, liberty to those that are bruised, and to proclaim the acceptable to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord has come. Hallelujah! Praise God. So that's Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. That's His own purpose. Hallelujah! That looks big, Gabby. We thank God for what Jesus has done. We thank God for redemption. Let's have a look at another one. Let's have a look at another one. Hallelujah. Let's have a look at, um, praise God. Okay. Let's have a look at Luke 1. Let's talk about John the Baptist. All right. Let's talk about John the Baptist. I'm going to read from Luke 1. I hope you're following me closely. All right. Hallelujah. Let's read from Luke 1. So we're talking about Jesus. Let's look at John the Baptist. John the Baptist in Luke 1. All right. Um, let me read from 18. No, no, no. I think I should start from 13. But the angel said, do not be afraid. Luke 1, 13. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Zachariah. God has heard your prayers. I'm using the NLT. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth will give you a son and you are to name him John. You, are, you will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will, he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the spirit of God, Holy Spirit from his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord. Take note of that. So that's his purpose. Turning many Israelites to the Lord. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the heart of the father to the children and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Woo! Hallelujah. Beautiful. That's another purpose. That's for John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Let's have a look at Joseph now. Hallelujah. Let's have a look. And I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Hallelujah. Those are the ones we consider very big. Yes, they are massive assignments. I must uh, accept, agree on that. Praise God. Let's look at Luke, Matthew 1. So let me read from 18. I'll just read from 18. Hallelujah. This was how Jesus the Messiah was born. Matthew 1, 18. This was how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. 19. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. I did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. That is simply the purpose of Joseph. So marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do not be afraid to take. So to take, for me, is simply the major assignment. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For a child with, for the child within her who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, she will have a son. You will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So to take, hallelujah, to take, simply to take. What about the three wise men? Let's go further. Let's go down. What would you really say? How can we describe the, hallelujah, how can we describe the mandates? What was the purpose? All right, hallelujah. So G Jesus came to save the world, to heal the sick, deliver those in captivity, declare the year of the Lord's favor has come. Um, John came to, you know, prepare the way for Jesus, all right, and to turn the heart of men to God. Joseph is to marry, hallelujah, because a child needs to be born. What about the three wise men? You know, going through Matthew chapter two, the Bible says that, let me start from verses one. All right, verses one. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in, Ju in Judah during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men. In fact, I was wondering where we got the, you know, that notion that there were three because no number was actually mentioned. So the wise men from east arrived in, Je in Jerusalem asking, what, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. Woo, hallelujah. They were, they, you know, it was the wise men that brought the information that Jesus was born. That was their purpose. Hey, simply put, follow the star. Follow the star. Monitor the star. 
Let's look at verses three. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as, he, as was everyone in Jerusalem. So th that means they didn't know. Yes, they didn't know because it was born quietly and all, but there, some men were positioned to take that message around. And because of what the wise men did, look at verses four. He called a meeting of the leader, leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked them, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? So when the wise men came, they started making their research. That where is the wise man? Where, where is Jesus supposed to be born? Verses five, in Bethlehem of Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. So the wise men helped them to see the fulfillment of three process prophecies. In Matthew chapter two, three prophecies were fulfilled. The first one is verse six. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you. He will be a shepherd of my people. Can you see, verse seven. So Herod called a private meeting with the wise men and learned from them the time that the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem, search carefully, carefully for the children, for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him. If you go further because of time, you will see again that the Bible confirmed that two other prophecies, hallelujah, praise God forevermore. I don't, I'm trying to pick up the verses now. There was another verse, you know, um, there were two other prophecies that was fulfilled here. One was fulfilled in verses eight, when Herod started killing the children, children below from two downward. That was a fulfillment from prophet Jeremiah. And again, there was another fulfillment of prophecy in verses 15. The fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, I call my son out of Egypt. So three prophecies was fulfilled by the obedience. You see, when you are fit for purpose, you are sensitive to in your spirit for the simplest of instructions from the Lord. Simple instruction, simple task. If you notice all those of the people I'm going to talk about, apart from Jesus, apart from John, most of them did not have any pulpit, pulpit, uh, um, how do I say, pulpit ministry. So when I talk, when I go to talk about the myth or the wrong conception, we'll mention some of them. So the wise men, G Joseph was to marry so that Jesus can be born. And the wise men were to come and stir up Jerusalem and bring and show the fulfillment because the guys there didn't know. Let's go to Exodus 2. Let's look at another, another story. Hallelujah. Woo! Is anybody having fun? I am having a good time. Hallelujah. The birth of Moses. All right. I'm just trying to stir, us, stir our heart and open our eyes to see that purpose is not really what we think. Sometimes it's not really what we think it is. It's in the simple things. It's sometimes at the back door. You are just at the back. Nobody is seeing you. Nobody is hearing you, but you are fulfilling purpose. That's why if you join the fulfillment of what God has called you to do by what people say, by social media, by what you hear, you will think you're not doing anything. So your eyes, our eyes must be fixed on Jesus this year. Look at the birth of Moses. Hallelujah. About this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant. Verses 2. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that the child was a special child. She saw that the child was a special child. She saw that the child was a special child and kept him hidden for three months. When she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and peach. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the river Nile. The baby sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen. Verses five. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came to, the, to bathe in the river. Then and her Attendants walked along the river. Please not take note of the people mentioned here. G Moses' parents were mentioned. Miriam was mentioned. Pharaoh's daughter was mentioned. So let me quickly go on. So Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Yeah, look at verse seven. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, to the princess replied. So the girl went out and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. So the woman took the baby home and nursed him. Verse 10, later, the boy was older. The mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him as his own son. If you check through the Bibles, some people, all right, some people, their mandate was to walk in a process, in a light, 
to see the fulfillment of some desires in God's heart. If anybody thinks, and do you know, after this Exodus 2, we never heard of Moses' mother. I want to celebrate all the mothers in the house, all the moms, well done. Remember that Moses' mother had Moses, there was Aaron, and there was Miriam. Miriam was the oldest. No, if the Bible says she saw that the child was a special baby, that, that is part of her purpose. Also, to see, to see, her, the part of her purpose is to see that the child was a special baby. Now, she was sensitive enough to know that there was something about Moses. Because if she had not been sensitive, if she had placed Miriam in Moses' position or placed Aaron in Moses' position, she had missed her purpose. Her purpose was to discern. Yes, that's the word. Just discern. Now, look at Miriam. If we are saying, ah, Moses was the deliverer. He did so well. So others did not do well. Miriam was the one who was bold enough to go to the princess and said, can I? Have you seen that kind of boldness? <laughs> hey, hey, goes to the princess to say, do you know what? I have, can I bring you somebody to cater for this? That's some boldness. That's some boldness. Now, we didn't read about Miriam again, except Exodus 15, when the Bible says she raised a tambourine and raised women and was singing, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders have been thrown into the sea. I, for me, she's the one that brought that song to us. Hallelujah. But if you look at John, that um, Exodus 15, the Bible says that Miriam, the prophet, woo, the Bible didn't record any other thing about her, but the Bible calls her the prophet, Exodus 15, 20. Miriam, the prophet, hallelujah. That means she, she must have done several other things. Hallelujah, praise God. What about the princess? What is the work of that princess? Why did she come to the river then? She needed to see that basket. Then she needed to adopt Moses. And Moses' mother needed to return Moses back to the princess because whoever will be the deliverer ought to be, choose to be taught and must learn the ways of the Egyptian. Can you see how that works? Because of my time, let me just run through a few more. Hallelujah. So are you dead thinking the assignment God has given you is very, very small? Some people have big assignments. Yeah, I have small. You yeah, better rejoice in those little, little instructions that will come your way this year. And if there's anything that, that has come your way that you have not done, I better jump at it. Hallelujah. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. If you study Genesis 15, Genesis 12, God called Abraham, leave your father and mother, leave your nation to the land. I'll show you, I'll make you great. I'll make you father of nation. All right. If you study very well, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, did they really do anything apart from fulfill that call? Abraham, I was looking at him. What did he really do? He was called in Genesis 12. Genesis 13, he and Lot, we, we read about them, then departed with. Genesis 14, he went to fight and get Lot back, right? Genesis 15, God um, um, spoke to him again. Then there was a, like a covenant that was enacted. Genesis 16, we read about Haggai. Genesis 17, circumcision, a sign of the covenant was established. Genesis 18, we read again the angel visiting Abraham. And the angel visited, visited Abraham. And we see that God telling him by this time next day, the life of Abraham was all about the birth of Isaac. Oh, pardon. Genesis 19, we read another story. I can't remember that. Genesis 20, um, Abimelech's story came. Genesis 21, Isaac was born. We, he got married again. His life was entirely about moving up and down. He was just moving up and down, moving up and down, obeying. Abraham lived a life of obedience, even Isaac. A life of obedience. Don't live. Um, um, don't go to G Egypt. Stay at Gera. He he was making wells and etc. That is what purpose is. Hallelujah. Have you thought about Ananias? Because of time, I'm just going to run through this. Ananias in Acts 9:10. The Bible calls him a believer. What was Ananias supposed to do? He was supposed to go and lay hands on Saul. So if you talk about Saul, you can't talk about you can't leave out Ananias. He was a believer. He was a normal believer. A gentleman, but he was the one. Remember when God told, when um, Saul became blind due to the um, encounter with light and God, God told him, we are going to go. Somebody will come and tell you, give you further instructions. God did not give Saul any instruction per se. Remember that in, 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 in Acts of Apostle 9, what the Lord told Saul was this. Verses 3, Acts of Apostle 9, 3. As he was approaching Damascus on a mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone around him. He fell to the ground and, he, and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Then 
who are you? So who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And and the and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now go get up, go to the city, and you will be told what must be done. Who brought that? Who, who came to tell you what must be done? It was this guy, Ananias, verses 10. And and now, now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in the vision. Go to straight stick, verses 11, to the house of Judas. Get there. Ask for a man named Tassos. So he's praying to me right now. I'll show him in a vision that a man named Ananias is coming to lay hands on him so he can see. Saul will have remained blind without Ananias. Ananias was just a believer. Because the Bible says, and there was a, now there was a believer in Damascus. Just that. Ananias was just a believer. What about Barnabas? Acts 4, 30. You know, Barnabas was not part of the 12. He was not part of the 12. He was just an apostle. It was it was um it was part of the um, um um apostle that was part of the early church. He was sent to Antioch, he did a lot of work. But do you know that if you go to Acts chapter 9, 26 to 28, it was Barnabas that went to endorse Paul. If you look at Acts, the Bible says that when um Saul was going around, people were running from him, people were afraid of him. It was Barnabas that stood for him. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9. Praise God. It was Barnabas that took Saul to the other apostles and said, this guy saw Jesus. So this guy, this, this guy is doing great works and et cetera. They would not have believed Saul and Paul, Saul who became Paul, who be, Saul who became Paul, hallelujah, if Barnabas did not stand for him. Hallelujah. And you can see what the great things they did together. So Barnabas to me was like a mentor, like a mentor. How can you, you know, Paul said, get mentor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? There's nothing irrelevant when it comes from God. Anything God tells you to do is what doing. What about Aquila and Priscilla? We know that they were tent makers. They, Paul, Paul lived with, it, with them. They did a lot of things together. But if you go to Acts um, 18, 24 to 26, you will see one major thing for, uh, Aquila and Priscilla did. They were the one that went to Apollos to tell him that, ah, this thing you are teaching me is heresy. Eh? Apollo, the Bible says, was an the Bible says he was an eloquent teacher. Hallelujah! He was an eloquent teacher, full of the word. He knows the word, but he was still out in not in line. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Bible says in, um, in there was meanwhile a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures. Hallelujah! Acts 18. He knew the scriptures. He arrived in Ephesus in Alexandria in e in Egypt. He had, been, he had been taught the way of the Lord and he taught others about Jesus with an enthusiastic spirit. He was teaching very vibrantly, but was not teaching full, was teaching wrongly. He was Priscilla and Aquila that heard him preaching in the synagogue and took him aside to explain. Can you see that simple assignment? Just go and explain. The same thing with Philip. Go to the chariot and, you know, explain to the union of, tell him about the scriptures he's reading. As small as instructions may be, they are fulfillment of God's agenda. What about this girl, Rhoda? Who remember Rhoda? Acts chapter 12, verses 12. And I like that story. Hey, Rhoda was a servant. Too. She was a servant. Hallelujah. She was a servant. But I love what the Bible talked about, what the Bible said about her. A servant, they were praying for Peter to be released. They were all gathered together. Do you know the other people in that prayer meeting were not mentioned? It was Rhoda, the servant girl, who was about her duty. She was the only one mentioned, apart from the apostles, though. Rhoda was the only one mentioned. She was only mentioned once in the Bible. That means she fulfilled purpose. Her purpose was to open the door for Peter. <laughs> Her purpose was to open the door. She was the one that opened the door. Why? She was faithful. She was committed. What was she still doing? She was a servant. And she could have said, I'm a servant. Why should I join prayer meeting? If all you do is to join a particular team, if you are doing the prayer watches in IARA, you are doing all the God, God has called you to do. You are doing 12 noon prayer watch, 3 p.m. prayer watch, you are good. Because there were other people praying there. Praise God. But there was somebody praying and working. She was multitasking. She was doing more than one thing. She was praying. She was also attentive that somebody was knocking. Remember when she came back and told the apostles, hey, 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 hey. They, they, they didn't believe her. So he kept on knocking. She was just meant to open the door. And her name was mentioned. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What has God called you to do? Do you feel it's insignificant? Are you called to raise up children for God? Are you a home mom? Is that the word, the word, is that the word for it? You are a child builder. 
a child nurturer. Rejoice in it. That's the only thing Moses' mother did was that. The parents of Samson, what was their purpose? To birth Samson and monitor him and stay with him. Hallelujah. I can go on and on. The widow of Zarephath, what was her work? Widow of Zarephath, to feed, feed the, the prophet. What about the Shunammite woman? Hospitality, that was all. Hospitality, hospitality. She created a space for him to rest. Put a table and a chair. The Bible was specific. She even put a table, chair and a lamp. Woo! It was important. That's why God, the Bible mentioned it. He, she didn't just good or do hospitality. She did it to the to the to as detailed as she was led in her spirit. And she was a rich woman. She was a rich woman for that matter. And if you look at all these people, a lot of them got blessed. Their personal needs were met. The widow of Zarephath, her son was raised. The woman of Shuna, Shuna, the Shuna, Shuna my woman, finally had her child. What about Anna, that prophet, and Simeon? Anna and Simeon in Luke chapter 2. Anna was a widow. The Bible says she was in the temple day and night, worshiping, fasting, and praying. Oto, if you are worshiping, fasting, and praying, and you see that's not enough, check out Anna. Check out Anna. What about Simeon, that elderly man, that man that the, the Lord, the Holy Spirit told him that he will not die until he sees the Messiah. I feel, I strongly believe that he was, a, was, an, he was an elderly man. Hallelujah. His own was to carry the Messiah and make that prophecy and make that proclamation. That's all. Hallelujah. I want us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus this, this year, as we go through this year. Hallelujah. I end with this. What are the wrong conceptions about, uh, about God's purpose and plans for us? Number one, I want us to know that there is no big purpose, small purpose, significant purpose. It's, it's insignificant purpose. From all the stories we've looked at this today, would you call anyone insignificant? Everything was interwoven. Everything was interwoven. Number two, it doesn't have to be a pulpit ministry or a fightful ministry. No, it could be to be so good to your neighbor. It could be to be greeting somebody. So this year I'm encouraging us, as I'm encouraging myself, to be, to be attentive to instructions and do what is inspired in our heart. Remember, purpose is anything that, that is the will of God, anything that blesses people, that glorifies the name of God, and in turn, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. So there is no big purpose. There's no significant purpose. There's no insignificant purpose. There's no small purpose. Somebody is doing something bigger than me. That's not the measuring stick. Oh. The measurement is Jesus. The measurement is God. You might be thinking, I'm not doing it. God is saying, well done. To so that mom, mom taking care of children, God is saying, well done. Well done. You are not treating this children because this one is going to be a prophet. This one is going to be a singer. This one is going to be another person to bring some, some, some hymns into our generation. Hallelujah. Like I said, another misconception, the applaud for what we are doing for God, for purpose, is not based on, you know, the, the applaud. Sorry, I'm trying to see what I wrote here. The applaud is not just based on words from men. The applaud. People feel when people celebrate you, when you are everywhere, that's the applaud. There are some people that will never be heard. There are some people that will never be heard. They will be behind, yet they are making impact. Hallelujah. The fulfillment of purpose is in doing what God has told us to do. Whether clean the shoe of somebody, whether, whether to serve somebody, whether to be in a prayer team, whether to be leading a prayer watch, whether to be a PA to somebody, in your office you are fulfilling purpose. If you are show, showcasing the word of God, you are showcasing the, the gospel, you are living well. You know, Barnabas was referred to as the son, son of encouragement. He was an encourager. He was an encourager. It could be your own, could be just to be encouraged, encouraging people. Has anybody listening to Joel Austin? I love him. And I know my time is up. I'm so sorry. I love him. There's no way you listen to Joel Austin, you will not feel encouraged. That is a great gift. Yours might be to just be encouraging people. Don't look for the big things. Start from where God has placed you. Start, start from the little, little instructions. And I pray that God will strengthen us in the name of Jesus. This year, we will not leave any detail out. We will not miss any detail. Tomorrow, we'll go on to talk about seven things that can, okay, I can go ahead. Okay, let me know how many minutes I have more. Praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. We give God glory. Let me see if I have any other person that I left out from my list. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my darling family, I'm telling you, where I'm at right now, I'm not seeing anybody. I'm not seeing anybody. I know they see anybody. I beg. Make everybody day in lane. Day your lane. They your lane, they your instructions. Don't stay within your instructions. Don't stay with yours. Don't keep looking for people to bless.
Keep looking for how to preach the word of God out. Keep looking for how to preach the gospel. The Bible says, the, the Bible says, preach the gospel. If you are preaching only the gospel, you are doing well. You are doing well. You are doing well. And God will keep strengthening us. God will keep establishing us in the mighty name of Jesus. You know the purpose, the purpose, hallelujah, the purpose of the butler and the baker, the purpose of the butler and the baker, their purpose was to go to prison with Joseph. <laughs> Their purpose was to go to prison and dream and cause Joseph to interpret it so that two years after, Potiphar, I mean, was it Pharaoh that was, uh, okay, it was Pharaoh that was on, on, that became the king. Pharaoh will now have a dream. He will not be looking for someone. One of them will say, ah, there was a man. That was their purpose. What's it talking? That was their purpose. The other one was to be executed. Well, that was his purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give God praise. Let's just pray for grace in the name of, remember that scripture we prayed with. Let's just say that word of prayer again. In the name of Jesus, 2 Thessalonians 1, 11. Therefore, we also pray always for you that God will count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and work of faith. Father, you will count us worthy of the calling. We will not just look at from significant things. We are looking for those big things. I have to hold the mic. No, I have to be seen. Father, help our hearts. Help our hearts. Help our hearts. Father, refine. We, we, we work on our motives. Help us to have clean motives. Help us to have God-inspired motives. In the name, help us to pick up all those instructions we've casted away that, oh my, I can't do this. Those that God has told to write a book, get into writing it. Those God have told to be a blessing to people, get into doing it. Those God have told to pick up some children and nurture them. Pick up some children, pay for their school fees. I'm encouraging you, this is the time. Father, we receive grace to do as you have instructed. And we decree, we declare that this year, 2024, it will be a time whereby you will be glorified in us and we will be glorified in you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this Fit for Purpose conference. Every segment will keep opening us to the truth and the realities of all you have for us for this year, 2024. We give you praise for today. We just say thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you for today. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you and see you tomorrow.